Said I've had many rebels try to edit my laws Just know that everyone and everything eventually falls I prefer to be invisible than weightless though And shape shift whenever I wanna take it slow In spaceship zero gravity the chamber closed But even astronauts need to make it home Away we go With the movement of a fuselage Move across the smoke mirrors and fuel exhaust Dear gravity, you ain't stopping this coup de tie With a boombox moonwalking over Newton's laws But then my ship landed I thought it was stranded But then I found her in the middle of static Switching the planet, center the motion Rhythm abandoned, quit with the flow Begin with expanded, rid of the laws But this is attraction, it was a pull I was taking for granted I was itching when my mission aborted I couldn't stop tripping over her centripetal forces I apologize to gravity, I simply avoided I only didn't listen cause I'd never been in an orbit like It's just gravitational 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 Gravitational Yeah. Your words be the water, be the sand and the tide too That my hands are now tied to Taking spoonfuls out the moon so I could scoop you out haiku I write poems on paper about how little dippers Still be bigger than skyscraper You're into intergalactic, intermingling tactics My spacey lazy love with lots of lingering habits I hope you're happy and my apathy cohabitate well Let's build an atmosphere that's half as clear as wishing well I wish away combustible lust, let us be stable for once No more question mark ellipses or eclipsing of sun We could be biggest bang, drifting into change Make a meteor shower look more like trickle rain This pain be black hole with the lasso It's a motherfucking hassle to fly through But I still travel to a castle in the sky with an asshole like you Because you ground me like this planet in my art And my feet and my hands and my heartbeat Can't stand it, damn it You got me high as rocket ship
tuned in we are here for the official release party of the youth speaks unified anthology titled between my body and the air if you hear you in the right place to be if you know anybody else who needs to be here let them know they better pull up what's good everybody thank y'all for coming through my name is ej walls aka sin q and uh i'm not nearly as gifted as these published young poets i'm about to hear from tonight but I be doing things with words sometimes, and I've been an uncle since I was born, so I guess I'm almost qualified to hold down this event for y'all. Um, I'm currently the lead poet mentor at Youth Speaks, and I had the honor of serving as one of the editors of this publication, so it's an immense pleasure to have been a part of something this special, and I'm just excited that we're able to share it with you all now. Um, I have the, the pleasure of hosting this event for y'all this evening, but before we get too deep into anything before we start we definitely have to acknowledge um, that here in oakland which is where i'm tuning in from oakland california we occupy the stolen land of the shoshenyo ohlone peoples so we give honor to the village of huchin and the lishan waterways we mourn the ongoing genocide of native peoples which america was violently founded upon we recognize that native peoples and their movements are alive and well today and we affirm our continued commitment to supporting indigenous resistance 
in addition to that, as we acknowledge the indigenous peoples who have and continue to live here, steward this land and resist uh, settler colonialism, we also acknowledge that this country has been built on, on the forced labor of African people through violent systematic abduction from their homelands and enslavement over hundreds of years. We acknowledge the impacts this has had on African descendants throughout this country's development, and we stand in solidarity with our incarcerated folks, victims of sex trafficking, and uh, undocumented laborers who are exploited for profit and represent the perpetuation of slavery in this country. So if you also recognize and acknowledge that, if you can get down with that, then wherever you are, say ashe wherever you are say i thin wherever you are say for show wherever you are say let's get it okay so if y'all ready to get it then let's get it before i get too deep into the show i want to know where everybody out there is tuning in from so those of y'all joining us on youtube what's up feel free to use the comment section to drop in where are you tuning in from what are you repping uh, like i said before I'm tuning in from Oakland, California, so it's good to see uh, everybody uh, that's also repping the Bay, but everybody else, you know, let us know where y'all tuning in from, and we can see just how far we're we're reaching out, just how far we're stretching. Um, add some thumbtacks to our to our world map here. Um, to give you a little bit of context about this event and this anthology, right? The Youth Speaks Unified Anthology is titled Between My Body and the Air. It's what happens when crisis prevents us from gathering in person, and we bring the noise online. So this year, as you know, the world was turned upside down and the same could be said for our events and activities at Youth Speaks. Uh, so as we revved up for an epic week long Bay Area Unified Festival that would include our Teen Poetry Slam, Unified Slam and MC Olympics, we were met with the unprecedented circumstances of social distancing and sheltering in place. So all of our programs had to pivot to the internet from um, our weekly after school workshops to the biggest festival that we put on, uh, Brave New Voices. So in staying committed to our mission, of providing space for young folks to be heard, we decided to create a publication that could serve as both a time capsule for this roller coaster of the year and as a celebration of just the incredible talent and wisdom and foresight that emerged in our online workshop spaces back in the spring when this whole thing first started. So the Unified Anthology allowed us to reimagine what it could look like to have youth poets from not just all over the Bay, not just all over the country, but from different parts of the world in conversation with each other. So as the curator of this event and the director of our programs, uh, Gabriel Cortez writes in, in the foreword of the book, here, young poets from West Oakland dab hands with poets from Brooklyn. Kingston prepares a bowl of ramen for Denver while St. Louis sits behind her and braids her hair. And much like our writing workshops, this collection became a mirror held up to the world. So we chose the title Between My Body and the Air because it reflected a question that each of these young authors addresses in their own way, which is, what does it mean to navigate the world in this body? where even the air has finally turned against me. So tonight, we have some of those published youth poets right here in the virtual building and some incredible feature performers to help us answer that question and launch the release of this anthology, this labor of love. Um, speaking of love, I gotta make sure before I bring these young folks to the virtual stage, that y'all know how to show these poets love, right? So like long ago on a planet far, far away, or AKA 2019, we used to all be able to gather in the same room and could show folks love with a shout or a snap, a clap, a knee slap, all the verbals and the nonverbals. And we wanna just encourage y'all that just because you can't necessarily do that in this space, just because a poet can't hear you show them love, please still do so. Use that comment section, drop lines that you love, um, affirm the poets, praise their work, and just let us know how it makes you feel. Because as we know, this is all about exchanging energy. And even though we can't be in a room together, we can all exchange energy online. Ultimately, if you want to show love, you can buy the book. But I'll tell you all a little bit more about how to do that later. I think for right now, I've said enough and we about ready to get this show started. So tonight, you're going to be hearing poetry by six authors from our anthology. Uh, Darnell Carson, AKA D Soul, Michael Sagan, Sarah Abbas, Zuhair Musa, Jaira Dang, and Jessica Valan, as well as our two incredible features, Sarah Kay and Nate Marshall. So it is my pleasure to get this thing started, to get us going with the first poet of the night. If y'all ready, say yeah. I hear you, even if I can't hear you say yeah. Right on. So about to come up to the mic first and dust it off real quick. We got an, uh, a poet rep in Oakland, California, born in the year 2002, reading On the Brink of the Third Act. I need y'all to show some love for Jessica. Jessica. 
Time ain't never been on my side. My schedule just make the music and the school she collide. Procrastination is dangerous cause you do it, you die. I look through all of these names and there ain't one to confide. I heard it's better to live than just to live to survive. Becoming in love with loneliness is hard to describe. When bitches who say they never leave just leave you behind. Then try to come back to life, no it's too late to revive. Hello, hello, my name is Jessica Vallon and this is my piece on the brink of the third act. These spring afternoons remind me of what I could have had. Correction, what I was supposed to have. In a fantasy world that one might mistake for the one we live in now, daisies braided into our curls and high noon sun kissing our skin, we crown sweet tea and strawberries, the guests of honor at our Sunday picnics. In my dreams, we are ordered to stay out of home, extend our arms through six feet of neglected space, end our evenings in piles of laughing bodies under the stars. Your head makes a home on my chest, like my heart and your brain were meant to act as one. But today, I stare through the window at the new wisteria, jealous of the way they bloom, of the way they stretch their petals to someone new, like Bender and Ferris, and Samantha Baker. Our reality is not a John Hughes film. Our coming of age story is not told in promposals and whispers behind slammed lockers, but rather pandemics and locked out voices screaming to be heard. We dig out candles from the backs of our cupboards, sing out of sync renditions of happy birthday through computer screens, take deep breaths and watch as our lungs fill with fear of the future, correction of the present, we let paranoia tuck us into bed and kiss us goodnight. Yes, during this spring we face uncertainty, but during this spring we bask in nothing but time. Let patience seep through our bones like the water my wisteria needs to bloom. Let art be our sustenance and feed ourselves on the lack of limitation. During this spring we wait for the falling action and the lessons learned of our rom-com turned horrors beg the screenwriters to give us happy endings, to give us closure, to let those credits roll and roll and roll. And for the love of God, please no Marvel type post credit scenes and no sequels. Let us write the screenplay for the next one. Yell cut and action as we please. Be the directors, editors and everything in between. Sit under the stars one night, then become stars the next. And maybe then we'll be able to reach out our arms and feel what it's like to not be alone, to plant our feet in the soil of a world that we can say is truly ours. For now, here's to too many late nights on Netflix and early mornings dreaming of the end. Thank you. Thank you, Jessica, for speaking to the range of emotions that we've all felt this year and reminding us to the reasons that we have to continue onwards. You feel me? So let's go. I, I think if y'all wasn't ready already, then you better be ready now. You dig what I'm saying? So we about to keep it moving to our next poet of the night. OK, and this poet born in the year 2000 is repping the San Gabriel Valley and Long Beach, California. And we'll be reading the poems, Girl in Isolation and Orderly Worship. So I need y'all to help me welcome and show the utmost love for Jaira. My name is Jaira, and I'm tuning in from the San Gabriel Valley. Thank you so much for having me. My first poem that I will be sharing with you all today is Girl in Isolation. Girl in Isolation, after Olivia Gatwood's Instagram page collaging self-portraits of girls in isolation. While she was away at college, the blankets increased in her absence. The books on her shelves peeled themselves open to imitate the sensation of fingers stemming pages. The clothes in her drawers wandered to remember movement in air. 
In the month she's been home, the backyard lemon tree and green onions have no idea what to do with the teenager sprawled in St. Augustine, or when she throws rocks into her neighbor's backyard to scare the squirrel teething on telephone wires. They reason her roots are not transplanted yet. The steel frame of her bed grumbles under her shifting weight at all hours of the day. Her stories collect dust. The drawers are in riot. She hasn't changed her sweat in four days. Toothbrush has been released of plaque scraping duties for the week. Then the poems spill from the baby blue walls to pull her in her arms and tell her to drink. There is a soft rebuilding when she draws the liquid and strength required to let herself cry. The second poem that I will be sharing with you all tonight is Orderly Worship. Orderly Worship, after Denise Roman's poem, A Woman's Place. Women should remain silent in the churches. They are not allowed to speak but must be in submission as the law says, 1 Corinthians 14, 34. When they ask you why your words arrive on their doorstep uninvited, do not offer them an explanation they refuse to see. Our bodies are not the welcome mat, though we were raised to bend to another shadow. Instead, call your mother and thank her. Tell her, this is how you taught me to survive in a world that claps back faster than you can blink. I learned to hold my tongue so hard, it swelled my heart a new chamber. This is how I grew. There will often be an unspoken question in their eyes. You do not have to be the answer. Instead, tell them the story about your brother, who in the first grade told his class, my hands were made to massage my mommy's back. You come from a line of women who led the kitchens, who crossed the continents to plant you here, who taught themselves English during night classes to work during the day. The cure is in your blood, your hands, your love. Trust that your compassion fosters gravity. Look how you find your people in a cluster of planet and stars circling around you like you are the sun. Thank you. Let's go, go in, poet. You feel me? Don't be nice. If y'all heard something that Jaira said that you appreciated, definitely let us know in the comments. Um, shout out to the strength that it takes to let ourselves cry, and um, and and show up with the strength that may may more of us give ourselves permission to do so after tonight. Thank you for those two powerful pieces, Jaira. Appreciate you so much. Uh, whoo, I got the chills over here, man. We ready? We ready for y'all? Okay. Like I said before, if you ain't, if you wasn't ready before, you better be ready by now, because we're gonna go ahead on and bring the next poet up to the mic. And I, ugh, I can't say enough about this young man, so I'm just gonna say what I'm supposed to say. Okay, this poet was born in the year 2003 and reps West Oakland, California. Okay, uh, met this cat as a high school student, and I'm just so incredibly proud to to bring him up to the mic right now to share with y'all. We about to get blessed. So y'all help me show some love. Reading his poem, Scars. Show some love for Zoo. Mm -hmm. So my name is Zoo from West Oakland. Scar. And so then, salute to the story. Ancient scarification, birth and blood race skin. If I were to touch the mark of my Habobas tribe, smooth the silk across her face, I would feel the blade that battled to create this beauty. An abandoned ritual representing a complicated history buried beneath the kingdom of Nubia or Habobas with the last generation to own this scar. 
her mama's mom is no stranger to the loss. Her daughter was murdered by false loving as her spirit left this earth. A wound opened in my grandma's heart that never healed right. As the foundation of her heart closed in on itself to protect the wound from infections, forgot the pain I rushed in, took my grandma by surprise and told her she'd never be the same. The one come from my grandma found in this land was holding me as a baby. Sixteen years later, she dead and she's still praying to God that a bullet never looked my way. Her son was kidnapped by the state. She left this world not knowing if he was dead or alive. She took with her to the grave the uncertainty of her son's livelihood. She knew nothing more than the cry of the grandchild she held at birth. I don't know why my foremother stopped, you know. All I know is my mother's generation birthed new scars. Out the blood of unsettled family trauma from dead siblings to lost cousins and one mother who tried her hardest to hold me together. That shit I can't speak on because... I ain't got time to be sad, only to be grateful. Mama always said, I ain't got time to be sad, only to be grateful. So I learned to be sad on my own time. Learned to lean on the pain as motivation to keep going. If the world sees my vulnerability, it gonna use it against me, Mama says. Never acknowledge it's hurt enough for it to take over. The cost of stifting through emotional baggage is far too high. Sadness is a privilege we have long fought for the right to bear, but have yet to earn. My mother's burns keep growing. She tells me they don't matter. That's just what happens when you walk through fire. You learn to brush aside a lot for the sake of your sanity. I wish she would learn to ice her pain instead of casting it away. Trauma means relentless hard work, never being able to slow down, recognize what you've been through. We left poverty in Sudan and find poverty in West Oakland. From losing a country to losing a city, mama says, it's endless, it's endless marathon is a gift from God. It's titled survival, but the war has yet to stop. The body's still dropping. This house still rings in my ears in the form of parental warnings. Baby boy, we've been running so long. We breathe through the cracks in our knees. Can't you see my arms bleed? We can't stop now. These battle wounds were woven just for you. This war zone has blessed you, given you strength, given you purpose. Thank the heavens. Those scars are still here to see. Thank you. Boy, I had a dream. Swear I had a dream, I'm Kareem with it Also deal with no hook, I'm Hakeem with it Stepping on the scene, leave you shook with it Yeah, I leave you shook with it If you talking out they neck, then you better watch what's next Word to my mommy, I ain't even trying to flex Word to my mommy, bro, you Come on, man, go off, bro, for the zoo We left poverty in Sudan to be poor in Oakland Man, if y'all heard Zoo say something you felt You better let him know in the comments uh, Shouts out to to the generational scars, both those that we must heal from and those that we learn from, you feel me? And shout out to the people that hold us close to heart um, and remind us, you know what I'm saying, when we sad, to be grateful. Um, I think this is a, a perfect opportunity to just remind folks like why we're having this event, why we created this anthology. Like literally the world is turning inside out right now and um, it's it has revealed to us um, a lot of issues that, that were already present, right? This year has exposed a lot of issues that were, were already here and have been exacerbated by, by the type of year that we just experienced. And a lot of the particular violences that we do experience in the United States and throughout the world, from police violence, border violence, the impact of COVID-19, colon uh, settler colonialism, imperialism, those are being documented by some of the most powerful voices of our time right now. It's the youth, y'all. Feel me? I just told you Zoo was born in 2003. Did you hear that? So, like, just... Thank, the, thank you to the poets. Thank you to the young people who are telling the stories. And I just want to urge everybody else to listen, right? We have to open our ears because the, the truth is out there. It ain't hard to find. Young people are letting us know what's up. So um, before I actually transition us a little bit, I also want to make a little programs plug, okay? Because while um, two of the poets that y'all just heard from, Jessica and Zoo, are both longtime participants of It Speaks programs, uh, we were also fortunate enough to meet Jaira earlier this year in our online after school workshop space as well as a host of other incredible young poets so um, even though it's unfortunate that we haven't been able to gather in person we've been doing these online workshops for free writing and performance workshops for folks 13 to 21 years old every wednesday after school so come on through you can register at bit.ly b-i-t dot l-y slash register for y-s and on there, you can indicate which programs you'd like to hop into. But yeah, like I said, come write with us every Wednesday. You can meet some of these incredible poets and write with them. You feel me? So without further ado, also, 
I've been telling y'all this is all in this book and you might want to know exactly what the book looks like, how you can get to it, uh, what the experience is like. And in order to show us, we got a dope presentation from our, our production squad. So without further ado, here is a piece by Alea Bradshaw called Wash Your Hands. Can't secret, but y'all knew that. Wrap it up like a ribbon, I'm on my vibe. Who really, who really, who really, who really rock with me? y'all hear the bars oh my goodness shouts out alaya bradshaw also featured in the anthology aka knife y'all better go check out some clothes good music if you was digging that there were so many bars i'm not even gonna try to quote none of the bars but <laughs> yeah that's an mc's mc right there y'all go check that out and i want to take this opportunity real quick to just shout out our production squad joan osado Brittany white for getting us looking good, sounding good right here on the YouTubes and things, it's getting that video streamed. And um, as you, if you haven't already, make your way over into the comments. We've got some instructions. Um, if you haven't seen it already, this ebook of the anthology is available for $15 at shop.youthspeaks.org. So, yes, you can buy the thing. Go buy the thing, support these young folks, and go stream some close good music while you at it. Um, but yeah, shout out Brit, shout out Joni, thank y'all, and the incredible creative director, mastermind by the name of Nick James, who was behind all of that, uh, making this thing as dope as it is. So yeah, I am very excited to move us into our first feature set of the night. Okay, so if y'all ready for that, 
drop a drop a yeah in the comments if y'all ready for that say okay and i'm about to introduce our, our first feature tonight by the name of nate marshall nate marshall is an award-winning writer rapper educator and editor from the south side of chicago he is the author and editor of numerous works including finna wild hundreds the breakbeat poets a new american poetry in the age of hip-hop and the audio drama Bruh Rabbit and the Fantastic Telling of Remington Ellis Esquire. Shout out Bruh Rabbit. My dad used to read e. Bruh Rabbit stories. Okay, Nate, I'm going to have to tap in with you. But okay, he is an assistant professor at of English at Colorado College, and he has bars. So you can buy Nate's new poetry collection, Finna, at nate-marshall.com. But let me go ahead and get out of the way and bring y'all our first feature, Nate Marshall. Oh, oh come on. I'm, I'm here, we good, we out here. All right. Landless acknowledgement. Before we get started, we would like to acknowledge that we live on some unseated bones. Sometimes me and mine imagine ancestral homes. All I got so far is Montgomery, Alabama. Maybe a boat, maybe a plot of land somewhere so far from the south sides I've claimed that I would get lost on the way. I admit sometimes my homies talk about their families immigrating and I get jealous. We lost the land we were custodians over before I was a twinkle in the eye of a twinkle in the eye of a twinkle in the eye. Closest I got to a homeland is my mama's Caucasian pitch on the phone calling the police. Closest I got to a homeland is not never calling the police. Closest I got to a homeland is my daddy's laugh in a spades game. Closest I got to a homeland is my lover's tongue talking or otherwise. Closest I got to a homeland is the funk under a DJ's needle and my hand full of a dance partner. Not to be dark, but I am. Not to be dark, but the planet is on fire. Not to be dark, but they move in capitals because the water is coming up. Not to be dark, but our bones are in that water too. Maybe that's my capital. Once the polar capitals melt and there's a whole lot less land for folks to buy and sell and steal, maybe everybody will feel a little more dark, will feel a little more homelandless like we do. Why you think I call my compatriots homies? Maybe ain't no home except for how your beloveds cuss or pray or pronounce. Cool. <laughs> this is so cool, man. I really am glad that I was asked to be here today. I got a lot of love for You Speaks and for Gabriel and for all the young people and the folks who put this thing together. Um, and it's a really it's a really dope book, so I'm, I hope y'all get it. I hope y'all please go ahead and cop that. Um, let me see. Well, what should I All right. <laughs> I read this. I was thinking about this poem. Um, so this next poem is called After We Stopped Rap. Um, and it was funny because after the book came out, uh, my homie, he, uh, he hit me up and he was like, yo, I love the book. Um, but I take issue with this poem. And I'm like, why? He's like, because nobody stopped rapping. I'm like, I know. It's just... I'm like, it's, it's funny, it's, a, it's an inside joke. Um, so this is called After We Stop Rap. <clears throat> a few are dead. A bunch have moved away. One I heard works contracts for the league's best. Another keeps bars in the Gentry's Brooklyn playground. One of the meanest I ever knew in a battle is in LA scraping up for a headshot. The rawest beatbox of all is a stay-at-home dad 
in a suburb so far from the fucked up art galleries where our shows were thrown and sometimes packed and more often empty except for us and the percussion. The ones here are thrown to the wind like dandelion fur. A postal worker, a teacher's assistant, a grease-stained mechanic. One I know wants to break into tech, thumbs coding books like brittle vinyl. A bunch of us work with kids. Some are strung out. At least one is a doctorate. Many of us sit on either side of a bar at inappropriate hours. Some are locked down or doing dirt that could get that done. But I'm sure in the quiet hours, wherever we rest our heads and hear a passing car with the familiar thump of a beat through two thin apartment walls or the bleeding bleats of a chorus of crickets with a slick tempo, we nod. We remain heads. We tip our temples to this Morse code. Cool. <laughs> and I just kick one more. Uh, I really appreciate this again. All right, let's see. All right, this is called um, What It Is and Will Be. Ain't yet no word for a world without the cop's unruly bullet or baton. Ain't yet no word for a world without children starved and lonesome. Ain't yet no word for a world with boundless capacity for care. Ain't yet no word for a world with every bloody debt repaired and repaid. Ain't yet no word for a world with touch exclusively consensual and ecstatic. Ain't yet no word for a world where each mistake is a holy possibility to improve. Ain't yet no word for a world where there are as many genders as dandelion seeds spinning in spring. Ain't yet no word for a world where every person is vegan and the last meat they ate was the rich. Ain't yet no word for a world with no fear. Ain't yet, but we working. Cool. Thank y'all so much. Uh, this is great. Peace out. Oh, snaps, snaps, snaps for our first feature of the night. Come on, y'all. Drop the love in the comments. You know where it's at. Uh, I saw somebody say, he's a professor at Colorado College. I'm a pioneer. Y'all better look. Get it in. Tap in with Nate Marshall. Go buy Finna. You know what I'm saying? Go buy the, his previous works. And thank you. Thank you so much for being in this space with us, Nate. Obviously, I can't speak enough to the fortune that's come out of this very unfortunate circumstance of although we are not able to gather in person, gathering online has allowed us to break down a lot of barriers. And who knows if we had ever been able to get Nate Marshall at a local youth speaks event, but we got him in here today. So yeah, shout out to you for being here and everybody else for joining us. I think y'all might be ready for the next poet of the night. And woo! If you ain't ready, you better get ready, okay? Um, we've got three more poets from the anthology about to share with you all, and I'm just so excited to get us started with the next one. Um, the next poet you're about to hear from is coming from St. Louis, repping St. Louis big time, okay? St. Louis was last year's champs at the Brave New Voices, uh, you know what I'm saying, festival. So we bring it, we bring it powerhouses around here, y'all. Born in the year 2003, about to read their poem, Whitewashed, 
from our anthology. Y'all give it up for the one and only Sarah. Dear boy, gonna bump your head, boy. I know life is hard. Just keep up your head, boy. Mama coming home soon. Daddy coming too. To get you out that place that feel like you inside a zoo. Know them kids you trying to fit in with ain't fitting so good. You're too black, you're too white, and too misunderstood. Don't worry about your enemies. Just keep the family close. Gonna be a few to switch sides. Just when I need you to yeah, kickbacks and freestyles. 40 Hi, ounces of freedom. Uh, my name that is Sarah like Voss, and I'm tuning people. in from St. Louis, Missouri. And here is my poem called Whitewashed. My grandmother taught me to fear the ocean, to fear the voice behind the wave. It calls for you, but do not follow the colonization behind the iris, the greeting, liquid with assimilation. She told me to remember where I was from at first. They will be kind and gentle, but they will wash you clean, dilute your color, starve your culture. They will drag you through privilege and power, through salt and slaughter. My grandmother never taught me swimming lessons. My first lesson was taught by white bodies. My first lesson was taught by drowning. A brown body can become waterproof when put in extreme pressure. My grandmother warned me. There is no such thing as a Muslim American. There is only American. There is only colonization. The only solution is eradication. She warned me about the great whites. They can smell your breath, your sweat reeking of salon and spice. But this body will always be too spicy. We'll always leave an aftertaste. No amount of water can wash clean. 60% of this body contains water. Water forever laced with mandy and silk. Forever laced with partition and pain. We will leave a stain of culture no ocean can wipe clean together. We will turn your oceans over again. You can wash over our history, drown us in your definition of land of the free, inject us with white culture until our pores secrete blue iris and porcelain. You can forget what you've done to us, but your calm will always follow before our storm. Thank you so much. Sarah for speaking to the consequences of some of the personal consequences right of colonization and excessive American nationalism in this place where as we know only some are free and few are brave right uh so yeah thank you for speaking to that Sarah and such powerful words let's go appreciate you and I have the pleasure now to keep us moving into our next poet of the night okay and we bringing it for this next poet we bringing it back to the bay okay albeit the other side of the bridge for me it's all good um this next poet was born in the year 2001 and he is repping daily city california and today we'll be reading this poem filipino heaven for us y'all give it up for michael I am from an archipelago that is nestled between the rising sun and the emerald equator. We ride island to island on boats of bamboo. The ocean connects us like waves. We rise together with the tides, and when we fall, we fall with any sung bug suck. This is our melting pot. We don't get asked, what are you? We are made from ingredients from China, from Spain, from Malaysia, from Mexico. Every Filipino is a unique dish of culture and history, recipes passed down like stories we left our children. We know where we come from. We can name the region, the city, an ethno-linguistic group. It's just not Tagalog, it's Ilocano, it's Pangasinan, it's Sambal. It's more than 175 different cultures. There are street vendors that yell and shout, the whole kind of San Miguel in his hand balancing two large pots that are held together by a stick on his back, scoops white silk clouds of tofu, dips his ladle down into a lake of brown sugar, and drops pearls of tapioca into the cup that is my childhood. 
we are no longer forced to become nurses or engineers to pay ransom for our families in the Philippines held hostage by dictatorship. Martial law and the economy so bad we send our children, our parents, our grandparents to work in other countries in order to survive in our own. The number one export is no longer Filipinos. The last ballot buying box we send out to the Philippines is not filled with American goods, but our Filipinos living in diaspora, we can finally go home. We were once hit by three tsunamis. We call them Castilla, Japón, and Cano. They flooded our cities, our waters, our islands, polluted our home with toxic ideas that we are never good enough. They taught us as to drag each other down like crabs whenever we were successful. They gave us treasure troves of papaya soap in exchange for our melanin. They stripped us, our shamans of their power, engraved in us, it is a sin to be bakla. A sin, salt, salty, like the ocean breeze, like the way colonizers describe our feelings about being colonized. You're, you're salty for people who we save and educated, you know that. Don't worry, little heathen. Spain is here to show you the light of God. Yellow brothers, we are here to free you from your Western corruption. Don't resist this. This is for your own good. Japan will unite all of Asia with or without your consent. Brown little brother, we have come to help you for your... You cannot help yourself. America is a nation of opportunities. We have heard it all before. We are the orphan children of an archipelago, carelessly adopted by other countries for a rich inheritance that we have never benefited from. We rose and fell like waves crashing against Manila Bay. We rose and fell like white flags. We rose and fell like protesters and journalists shot by Duterte administration. We rose and fell because Isang Baksak means if one of us falls down, we all fall down. Family is one of the most sacred things to us. We host karaoke nights every night. From harana serenades for lovers to turntable stages for our Filipino DJs, there are basketball courts filled with people willing to play games against each other. Chismis flows from titas and lolas in the corner giggling. And when we don't know someone's name, we just call them kuya or ate. We celebrate strangers as family. You can see Don Mabolon ask Larry Ideong about the Delano grape strikes in Stockton when Little Manila was in its prime. We chug Sam Miguel beers with Jose Rizal and Emilio Aguinaldo and ask them about the Philippine Revolution. We feast on top of banana leaves, eating with our hands like prayers that were finally heard. And after three waves of colonization, we have finally been heard. Brown skin baby and I'll keep making more. I'll keep making more. I'm a brown skin lady with a brown skin baby and I'll keep making more. I'll keep making more. I'm a brown skin. Ooh, come on, thank you, Michael. Y'all drop some love in the comments if you heard Michael say something that you felt. <clears throat> uh, thank you, Michael, for ooh, telling, bringing us into that world so vividly and telling a story that could be so tragic and so beautiful, right? Heard. We are the orphaned children of an archipelago carelessly adopted by other countries for our rich inheritance. You better speak to that experience. Goodness gracious. But shout out to to continuing to to put up our prayer hands, right? And continuing to struggle until we are we are heard. I appreciate you for that. And, and yeah, thank y'all for rocking with us. Uh, we're gonna need a just a hot minute, just a hot little second before we move into our next poet. So appreciate y'all. And in the meantime, enjoy the tunes. I saw somebody mentioned it in the chat earlier, but all the music you're hearing is by local Bay Area artists. So, so shouts out to the one and only Jada Imani for curating this incredible playlist. Y'all go ahead and enjoy some of the tunes from our young Bay folks um, before we get you to your next poet. Let's get it. 
bitch on my brown girls darker than a paper bag preach to the melanin deficient jealous how we live in passing on the hate to our children stay blessed when your girl come around with the fist up revolution gotta stay brown i'm a brown skin lady with a brown skin baby and i'll keep making more i'll keep making more i'm a brown skin lady with a brown skin baby and i'll keep making more i'll keep making more i'm a brown skin lady with a brown skin baby and i'll keep making more i'll keep making more i'm a brown skin lady with a brown skin baby and i'll keep making more i'll keep making more i'll keep making more we back and we back and we back oh appreciate y'all patient shouts out once again i already told you one time but brit Johnny, our production squad, our all-stars, our heroes. We would not be able to, to pull this off if it weren't for them. So shouts out to the behind the scenes crew uh, making it happen for us. Once again, thank you again for our last poem from Michael. So powerful. I see a lot of love in the comments for all the poets so far. So shouts out. We got one more featured poet from the anthology before our second feature. Okay, so y'all hang tight with us if you're enjoying the show. Make sure you're letting us, letting us know. And um, tell your people who aren't here yet, we still got a little while. They haven't missed it. So if anybody, you know, out there you think needs to see what's going on, send them the link right quick. But anyways, I now have the pleasure, like I said, to bring up our last poet from the anthology. Okay, and once again, bringing it back to the bay. You dig what I'm saying? So this next poet was born in 1999. And... Uh, as listed in our anthology is repping Vallejo, East Oakland, Antioch, Pittsburgh, and Stanford, California. You feel me? All over the map. So y'all show some love for D Soul performing two poems for us tonight. Let's go. I've been sad, been half, been glad to learn when Sin be gassing and they cut me down timber. Oh, her convert, hurt in the holy space. Confused, comforting with grace. Confused, supportive with support. Being can depend on. All right, everybody. Uh, I'm D Soul. Nice to meet you. Um, I have two poems for you tonight. First, which being called Poem of Numerous Things Unspoken. A boy walks into a room and is called Redacted. I am asked for my redacted and I hand over my spine. There are a million ways to say redacted and I have never been good at any of them. Redacted is a million tiny prayers, praise dancing on my tongue for a redacted that will not hear them. I hear redacted and a blossom of redacted bloom from the roof of my mouth. There are not enough homilies for the redacted stuck in my teeth. I spill repentance before every redacted that got me here. I wonder if heaven rewards a crown for every redacted part of myself I kill. Saint and sinner are just two ways of saying redacted. There is no redacted in the afterlife, only the promise of a maybe. My hands have always been the most redacted thing I own. And then the second poem, after Denez Smith's alternate name for black boys. And when they finally hand me a name, I will be still wisping most of me, fading memory first into tomorrow, still burning at the sight of me, my hand a watermark of a forgotten summer, still glowing in the lost light muddy mirage, morbid marriage of mutability and dirt, always shifting for another's God, steady silent for another's flame, bone crackling quiet, they will call me kindling, see me gaslight drenched, name me guilty, never find the igniting match, monster made of molehills, an afterthought, still praying for an unraveling, ontological absence, still searching for salvation, demi deity of vanishing into dawn, still holding horizon, strong as mama's hush, holy as the knife in her teeth. I've been, I've been down, I've been depressed, but I'm okay now. I've been doubted and discouraged. I'm just trying to make my way out. They ain't had much expectations for a nappy broke bitch, but I knew since I could connect the dots, I put my people out what? this shit. I don't move on no one time, and I get these people enough. Okay. Turn all my niggas on the stage before my shit in the cut. Wow, 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 wow. 
Come on, snaps for D Soul. I'm so incredibly blown away by all six of y'all. Like, ooh, if y'all heard, if y'all heard stuff you appreciated, drop it in the comments. A couple of things I heard. I wonder if heaven rewards a crown for every redacted part of myself I kill. Come on, uh, gaslight drenched and made me guilty. Thank you, D Soul, speaking so explicitly to your human experience, black experience. Like, thank you for being here. We see you, we appreciate your being for real. And I want to take this moment real quick to just to remind everybody how different of an experience this is for the poets that are performing, right? Like, this is not being in a venue surrounded by people that you love, surrounded by that pal the palpable energy that you can feel and, and feed off of, right? We're literally sp spitting into computer screens and these poets can't see y'all and they can't see the YouTube comments going crazy. So just like, once again, further want to appreciate and affirm how incredible and that the how incredible it is and the courage that it takes for these poets to do what they're doing right now. And I'm just like blessed to be part of the experience. So <clears throat> if you were blown away like I was, you might be wondering if you're a young person, how you can get down with the next dope Youth Speaks publication. And I wanna let you know that you in luck because today, Friday, November 20th, that's today's day, yes, 2020, we are officially opening the first submission window for our next undertaking, which is the Youth Speaks Unified Mixtape. And that is a special audio project to document the soundscapes of our times and uplift the most urgent stories that the world needs to hear right now. So we got the call for submissions up and live. You can find it at another bit.ly B-I-T dot L-Y slash Y-S mixtape call. And that's where you can find all the information that you need for submitting to the mixtape. And uh, yeah, just come on through we're gonna have poems we're gonna have songs we're gonna have slaps we're gonna have interludes all the things just send in your work we can't wait to get into it with you and yeah without further ado i think i can usher us into our second feature set of the night that i know so many of y'all have been patiently and eagerly awaiting all right it is my pleasure to introduce the one and only sarah k who is a writer performer, educator from New York City. She's the author of four books of poetry and has shared her poems in Cornfields in Iowa, an orthodontist office in Nepal, a Viking, a Viking ship on a fjord in Norway, a church in New Zealand, a nightclub in Singapore, the Royal Danish Theater in Denmark, a public square in Estonia, a Broadway stage in New York City, in the back rooms of dive bars, middle school gymnasiums, and once on top of someone's dining room table. And now here at the Youth Speaks Unified Anthology release on YouTube. So I wanna encourage y'all to buy a signed hardcover version of Sarah K's classic poetry collection, No Matter the Wreckage, on shopsarahk.com. That's S-A-R-A-H. K A Y. So I'm gonna get on out of the way and pass this here mic on over to Sarah. I've been up and I be like, oh, sis. You that bitch, I be like, oh, you poppin'. Your smile pretty. And every time you clap back on a hoe, that shit be witty. You important. Your voice matter. Okay, you gained a long way, but your booty getting fatter, bitch. You smart. Yeah, that shit's impressive. Okay. When I am inside writing, all I can think about is how I should be outside living. When I'm outside living, all I can do is notice all the things there are to write about. When I read about love, I think I should be out loving. When I love, I think I need to read more. I am stumbling in pursuit of grace. I hunt patience with a vengeance. On mornings when my brother's tired muscles held to the pillow, my father used to tell him, for every moment you aren't playing basketball, someone else is on the court practicing. I spend most of my time wondering if I should be somewhere else. So instead, I have learned to shape the words, thank you, with my first breath each morning my last breath each night. When the very last breath comes, 
at least I will know I was grateful for all the places I was so sure I was not supposed to be, all the places I made it to, all the loves I held, all the words I wrote. And even if it is just for one moment, I know I will be exactly where I am supposed to be. Hi, you speaks. My goodness, it is so lovely to be here with you. It is so amazing to get to hear these miraculous young poets. It is so great to get to to live in this space for a little bit. I've been missing people gathering to enjoy things. Like recently, the only place we get to go is the internet and people do not seem to go to the internet to enjoy things. Um, and I miss getting to gather with folks and just enjoy poetry. So getting to be here and enjoy this evening with you has been a delight. Also, I think if we were to um, catalog like all of the sounds in the universe in like the top 100 sounds would be Nate Marshall's giggle. So anytime I get to hear that is a good day. Um, during this time, I have discovered a problem that I have, which is um, whenever somebody says, hey, can we move this meeting forward an hour? Or actually, can we move this meeting back an hour? Either one. Whatever they mean, I think they mean the opposite. Like, I don't understand which direction they're trying to move the meeting. And like in this time where there's so many like a Zoom appointments and then things get moved. I just find myself constantly messing this up. Um, so this is a newish poem um, a, that is about where I'm at right now. When you ask to move the meeting back an hour, you mean the opposite of what I think. Language is a series of flimsy agreements. Time cannot be relied on. Neither can the way we move through it or it through us, needle-eyed humans, sharp and hollow. So here I am, too early or too late. I knew I would not be the one rearranging deck chairs as the ship goes down. It turns out I am the one writing poems about the deck chairs. How will I explain the color of the sky to our grandchildren? Who am I kidding? There will not be grandchildren. And if there are, they will not know any other kind of sky. I'm sorry. I am Pandora's box in reverse. I crack open and cannot stop what charges in. It is getting crowded in here. I'm sorry. Break in case of emergency sounded like instructions and I stopped listening to what came next. I try to only promise what I can guarantee. I tuck a plant into warm soil, promise it a place on a sunlit sill and even if it will not promise me a blossom in return, I promise to find the beauty of what will die a comfort and not a threat. I hope this finds you well. <laughs> well, I hope this finds you. I hope you can be reached. I hope what is next is a face that is familiar, that is not at all surprised to see me, says, Sorry, have you been waiting long? So I can say, no, I have just arrived. Um, all right, I've got one last poem for you. Uh, and before I say that last poem, I actually just wanted to read, um, not even uh, read is a weird way, phrase. I wanted to say to you the blurb that I wrote for this anthology um, because I, I really mean it and I feel it. And um, 
and and I want you to know it. So I, this is what I wrote when I got a chance to read this anthology. I said, trying to cultivate community is hard. <laughs> it is easier to find excuses to drift away and lean into isolation and trying to create art that is honest and insightful is hard. It is easier to despair, but these poets are not interested in what is easy. This anthology is a really exciting example of young people choosing poetry as a way to forge kinship and make sense of the world and mourn and fight and praise and dream and find language for what seems languageless. And it is a really good reminder of what poetry can be. Um, so I'm very grateful to the poets who contributed to the anthology, to the poets who contributed to the evening. Um, it, it is an honor to get to hear from you and learn from you. Um, so here's my last poem. This poem is based on a line from a fellow poet named Kava Akbar. And Kava found a photograph many years ago now online of scientists who had dissected a blue whale. And then in the dissection, they took the heart out of the whale and they hung it on a hook from the ceiling, which is how they were able to see that the heart of a blue whale is big enough that a human can stand up inside of it. That's how big it is. So Kava shared this um, picture with the world and did so with the caption, this is a reminder that the universe has already written the poem that you are planning on writing. And I used to find that um, upsetting because I thought it meant that I would never discover, I would never be able to invent beauty, that someone would always get there first. Um, and instead I have decided that actually it's very reassuring because it means that all I have to do is, is um, pay attention better to what, what beauty the universe has already found for me. The universe has already written the poem that you were planning on writing and this is why you can do nothing but point at the flock of starlings whose bodies rise and fall in inherited choreography, swarming the sky in a sweeping curtain that for one blistering moment forms the unmistakable shape of a giant bird flapping against the sky. It is why your mouth forms an Oh, that is not a gas, but rather the beginning of, oh, of course, as in, of course, the heart of a blue whale is as big as a house with chambers tall enough to fit a person standing. Of course, a fig becomes possible when a lady wasp lays her eggs inside a flower, dies and decomposes the fruit evidence of her transformation. Sometimes the poem is so bright, your silly language will not stick to it. Sometimes the poem is so true, Nobody will believe you. I am a bird made of birds. This blue heart, a house you can stand up inside of. I am dying here inside this flower. It is okay. It is what I was put here to do. Take this fruit. It is what I have to offer. It may not be first or ever best but it is the only way to be sure that I lived it all. Yes, Sarah K. Sarah <laughs> K, everybody. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much. Um, so many things to quote. So much love going on in the YouTube comments for you for sure. Um, that was so special. And I, when you said you were going to read the blurb, I was like, oh, for real? Like, thank you for the blurb too before you even came through for the to, to feature at the show. Um, there was so much fire in that. Like, 
thank you for for coming through and for supporting this work and all of the things that shouts out to to you speaking to so many experiences right now i know everybody out there also stumbling in pursuit of grace feels seen right now um, everyone who also hopes that their words find someone and hopes that their loved ones can be reached um real talk I, i'm a even shamelessly i seen my mom in the YouTube comment say something about that comment. And I was like, oh, look at this full circle. Like, oh my God. Anyway, I'm gonna stop. Y'all go go cop the book, No Matter the Wreckage, on shopsarahk.com. And what an amazing show. Like, good Lord. We had two incredible, incredible features in Sarah K and Nate Marshall. We had some unbelievable young folks. Everybody, please give it up, give it up, give it up for Jessica, Jaira, Zoo, Sarah, Michael and D Soul, obvious, and all the other poets that y'all have not even gotten blessed to see their work just yet. Um, thank you to the audience out there for tuning in with us. Thank you to all of our poets, not just the ones that were featured, but everybody that submitted. We appreciate y'all for even making this possible, right? Um, and and shouts out to all y'all's elders and ancestors for carrying you this far to even be a part of this now, uh, ushering you into uh, your 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 creative spirit as writers and storytellers. Thank you, special, special, special thank you to our ASL interpreters, Trisha and Glow, for real. Uh, you know, makes it makes it so much more full of an experience to have y'all here, not only for your dynamism, but for making sure that we can make the show as inclusive and accessible to everybody as possible. Uh, thank you to all the hands that made the anthology possible. Shout out our creative director, Nick James, the genius behind the aesthetic of the whole thing. Um, also, it was his brainchild that this ebook be so interactive. So I don't know if I mentioned earlier, but for those of y'all who don't know already, this, this publication, you can not only read the work from the poets, but you can actually listen to or watch every single poet perform their piece using the icon on each page. You just scan the little code, click the icon, and it'll take you to either the SoundCloud link or the YouTube video, where you can also witness the poems um, in real time with the poets that wrote them. And that's so incredible. So shout out Nick James, shout out our managing editor and, and, and uh, program director, Gabriel Cortez as well as the other folk, uh, the other poet mentors that helped edit this thing down, Sandy Vasquez, Priti Vangani, Jada Imani. Love y'all for helping us sift through all of these submissions. Shout out to our compliance manager, and Smooth for helping us figure out how to fund the thing. And for our executive director, always, always, Christy johnson Moon for pushing all the buttons, giving us the green light and the thumbs up to make it happen. We would not be able to have done it without all of the folks I just mentioned, as well as the homies, the peers, the educators, the good friends who spread the word, submitted pieces, told people about it. We're just so excited to be in community and have such a such a widespread network of folks who love this work and, and love the stuff that we're doing. So yeah, make sure y'all follow Youth Speaks on social media at Youth Speaks. You can visit our website at youthspeaks.org. And like I said, buy the anthology on shop.youthspeaks.org. Go peep all the poems, listen to the poems, watch the poems, laugh, cry, celebrate, rejoice. And we gonna see y'all. Oh, and don't forget, if you wanna be a part of the mixtape, submit to the Youth Speaks Unified Mixtape. Our call for submissions is live, so we can do this again next year. And, and in the meantime, if we don't see y'all at a workshop on a Wednesday or at an open mic on a first Friday with our partners, Chapter 510, then we gonna see y'all at the next release event coming up in February where you can hear from even more poets from this incredible anthology. Thank y'all for being here. My name is EJ Walls. And yes, this has been a Youth Speaks production because the next generation is speaking for itself. We just gotta listen. It says it's ours. It's our time right now. Just letting y'all know. Nigga, we still winning! Pulling up, slapping out that window. Loading niggas, rolling up that endo. Kinfolk, I told your ass to tuck all them extendos. Niggas start tripping when they drunk up off that hendo. Pulling up, slapping out that window. Loading niggas, rolling up that endo. Kinfolk, I told your ass to tuck all them extendos. Niggas don't listen when they drunk up off that hendo. Slide through the point, just pay double. Yeah, niggas today's gotta leave from the room. Yeah, you can leave. Only family stick around. Ain't the best, but I believe. Yeah. I can't even lie, I found your heart so cold All that weight on your shoulders What you paint your true colors